medium, rural, um, Antarctica. I don't know. You haven't been there yet, have you? No, I can't even get the Hawaii gig. Don't you? Oh, okay. <laughs> well, Hawaii's probably a lot, lot more uh, temperate. Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> based on my experience there. Now, Carol is uh, not only the director of Premier. A director. Not a me. director of pr Premier Performance Partners. But she is also on the board of Amy, re recently elected to that position. She is the chair of the Amy Technology Management Council. The Technology Management Council, if you're unfamiliar with it, is uh, basically the support that we all need uh, sometimes in doing our jobs effectively. Uh, there's a ton of resources that the Amy Technology Man Management Council has put together over the years, and it's been about five or six years that but we're going TMC's on eight been, years. Eight years, eight years that the TMC has been around. Um, I want to emphasize emphasize that because if you go out to the Amy.org website, there's all sorts of great stuff. But if you go into the TMC section, you'll see things such as job descriptions. If you're looking to standardize your job descriptions, you'll sign uh, you'll find things that uh, I, I heard Carol talk about a, briefly. And maybe we can get her to talk about this a little bit more, like the core curriculum project, um, a project to investigate what the core standards should be for educating a biomedical equipment technician. And uh, I could go on. Uh, Carol has actually asked me, and I appreciate this, to not go on about <laughs> all the accolades that we could give her. Tonight she's going to talk about the, what we need to do to be prepared for the future of healthcare technology management. Carol Davis Smith. Thanks, Dustin. Thanks. Um, okay, just real quick, want to reemphasize: go out to the website, Amy.org, TMC Connect, tons of resources, and um, both like material resources, but also names and, and contact information for others. Um, one of the things I firmly believe in is networking and cross communication and pollination and all those sorts of things. Whatever analogy you want to use, um, because this field is changing quickly uh, because we're a, a piece, and, and we'll talk about this tonight, we're a piece in a very big puzzle um, that is in, obviously, a very dynamic state. Um, and, and to that point, I guess, I, I had the question earlier tonight, um, my intent is not to be partisan here. Um, I, I realize that this is very politically charged, um, but what I'd like to focus on is just the environment that we're in, uh, right, wrong, or indifferent, um, and, and how, how my company, the company I work for, Premier, um, has interpreted it. Um, some data we've collected, um, data that we have pulled from other folks to try to paint a picture. And then um, share with you what I think my crystal ball is saying uh, based on conversations with my peers uh, and attending meetings like this uh, and talking with people throughout the healthcare uh, community. So um, I will, oops. I will hope that this will come back up. There we go. And uh, <laughs> we'll get started. And please feel free. Um, I like to make this um, a, a dialogue. I'm going to trust uh, Dustin and the others to keep us on track as far as time. Uh, but please feel free. If something doesn't make sense, um, throw your hand up and we'll, and we'll work through it. OK. So that being said, um, this is sort of restating the obvious. The unsustainable trends tend not to be sustained. Um, although some might say we've tried to do that in the United States with healthcare, um, and as we look at some of the data um, over the last uh, several decades, you can see how we continue to grow and grow. So these are kind of the numbers that you hear about on the nightly news um, and uh, all the cable channels and whatnot. Um, this this growth, this just tremendous growth um, year after year in terms of what we're spending on healthcare. And the question really uh, becomes, what are we getting for that dollar? And so this, I think, is an interesting graph where we're looking at the dollars spent, um, and those are the bars that you see there. And then the little black diamonds is the average life expectancy. And across the bottom, my apologies, it's really, really small, but across the bottom there are countries uh, around the world. Um, the United States is over there on the far side. We have the tallest bar, which means we're spending the most money. However, um, it, it two and a half times more than the average, but we're number 20 in life expectancy. Um, a, a little over a year less than, than um, the average. 
And so that, so you start begging the question, what am I getting for my money? Okay, I'm spending a lot, but I'm not getting as much as perhaps someone in another country. Another way of looking at it has to do with some of the quality metrics, um, access metrics. And once again, we ask the question, are those dollars being spent in the right places? Okay, I don't think any of us would, would argue that we want to spend, that healthcare is a good place, you know, we all want to stay healthy and whatnot, but are we getting something for that dollar? Okay, um, so right now those numbers look a little um, <coughs> concerning. Okay, so another graph that sort of drives it home, and this, we're going to start getting into the why is this, where, where's the problem? Um, half of our, our, our dollars, the dollars we spend on health care, are spent on only 5% of the population. And when we get to half of the population, we've spent a full 97% of our dollars. This, what my colleagues at Premier believe, uh, and I think makes sense based on what I've read, is really tied up with a lot of chronic diseases and the management of uh, those long, not so much the train wrecks, not so much the folks we find in the ICUs, um, for, um, you know, uh, literally car wrecks and shootings and whatnot. This is, these are folks that are dealing with things like um, heart disease and asthma and uh, COPD and those sorts of things. So this is concerning. So half, um, half the population is only really benefiting, if you will, from 3% or is only using 3% of the total dollars that we're spending. So there's this disparate spending of the dollars as well. Uninsured and the underinsured. This is becoming an ever-growing problem across the country. Um, talked to folks tonight and other nights about how they've moved in and out of the biomed field because hospitals lay off, OEMs lay off, things, hospitals get sold and, and, and merged and things change. Um, obviously that's the same dilemma in, in the larger uh, population as well. So the dollars that, and, and the costs for uh, how patients are, are cared for and how their care is paid for is changing. That dynamic is changing. So as we start talking about health care reform and the things we've heard and all the data that's been thrown at us over the last several years, um, it, it, there's folks that have actually tried to, to flowchart this and it becomes extraordinarily confusing um, and, and the dynamics of what all plays into this um, just becomes worse than any probably wiring diagram many of you guys deal with on a, on a daily basis. And that's what makes this such a difficult problem uh, to solve is that, um, and, and we'll talk more about this, is systems of systems. You tweak something in, on this side and it causes changes on this side. And so trying to find that mix and the interconnectedness is, is very important.